Namaste and good morning. I would like to thank organizers, including Investment Board Nepal and the Standard Charter Bank, along with Shazan as a partner for initiating the discussion on role of innovative financing as an instrument for mobilizing resources for development in the context of Nepal. As we are in the process of preparation of annual budget, it is very timely and relevant to address huge resource gap in the development and finance. We need enormous resources for financing SDGs, meeting infrastructure gap, addressing climate change challenges, and attending inclusive, broad-based, and sustained economic growth. The conventional wisdom has been that the responsibility of managing development finance lies solely with the government. However, the successful mobilization of innovative financing tools in similar economies, such as blended finance, green bonds, and green loans, among others, has taught us to share the state responsibility of resource mobilization by other actors, including development finance institutions and private institutions. The underlying principle, however, remains the same, collaboration to maximize development impact and increase welfare of the people. Be that as it may, collaboration requires coordination and a streamlined discussion on how to increase the inflow of funds in the country. The macroeconomic data for the first nine months of current fiscal year, recently released by the central bank, does indicate that inward FDI flow is small at 34 million USD. However, our monthly remittance inflow stands at about USD 700 million and foreign exchange reserves at USD 10.9 billion. Sufficient to cover the prospective import of 9.4 for 9.4 months. Let me inform you that the inflow of international finance has been historically low and quite volatile. We are member of the WTO. We have adopted liberal economic policy for more than three decades. Our current account of balance of payment is convertible. Our currency is pegged with Indian rupees, but for rest of the convertible currencies exchange rate is market determined. Nepal is managing its macroeconomy with sufficient focus on stability and resilience, with comfortable level of foreign debt and absence of any commercial international bonds it is relatively safer from short-term shocks and volatility as manifested, as manifested uh, by Nepal's resilience in the global financial crisis of 2007. This has been proven to be a structural advantage to the country where major global financial events have not much impacted Nepal significantly. Despite all this strength, I am just wondering what is missing, which, because of that, we are not able to bring in innovative financing to complement financing needs of the country. Therefore, my first concern is, are we adequately communicating the positive macroeconomic story of Nepal to global community. Nepal has neither defaulted debt servicing in history, nor has any international company been denied of the facility to repatriate profits. This creates an extremely positive story 
Our credit history as a country is tremendously positive. We need to highlight this in the international financial market. Additionally, Nepal also has a very healthy external debt profile. Our debt to GDP ratio remains sustainable with annual foreign debt servicing obligation less than 1% of our GDP. This structural advantage did shield us well last year when the South Asian region was facing pressure due to a rise in commodity prices and some countries had twin deficit problem. Nepal had no stress due to external debt obligation at comfortable level. Another extremely positive aspect of Nepal is a young population with a high potential demographic dividend and the digital shift we have seen post-COVID. The median age of Nepal is under 26 years of age and the National Planning Commission forecast is that the demographic dividend would remain in the country until 2050. We still will be having a young population that would be supporting economic activities of the country for the next 25 years. Our challenge would be to optimize the advantage of the resources that we have. Currently, we are not fully capitalizing the strength and it is a fact that we have more than 3 million migrant workers in foreign employment. It is somehow supporting our economy in the form of remittance, which also has not been adequately channelized into productive sector investment. Lastly, our immense potential for sustainable finance, including renewable energy, is an example to the world. Innovative financing tools would also mean benefiting from global structures that reward net zero initiatives. This is also need to be brainstormed further. My second concern, therefore, is are we focusing on return of project investment? Nepal is in a process of sovereign credit rating, which has been delayed due to COVID. We are COVID. We are considering to resume the process so that investors would have much confidence to make investment decisions. It has been well established that when talking to foreign investors, the major point of focus would be around the return on investment. Additionally, since we have not been rated the return of inv on investment would need to cover the perceived risk premium in addition to the risk-free rate of returns so that there would be a return enough to make the opportunity cost of investing in other countries. Currently, foreign direct investment into Nepal accounts for only 0.3% of fund flowing to South Asia. We are committed to resume the process of rating and to carry out the associated reform to make conducive environment for foreign investment. Our focus should now shift to making projects profitable so that there are opportunity to in involve the private and development sector to create collaboration. Metrics such as the internal rate of return and return on risk weighted assets invested in a project should be driving discussions and attract, attracting investors. These studies should be readily available with our project banks, who would be having opportunities that enable country to drive national pride and strategic projects. My third concern is innovative finance should not be simply repackaging of existing resources, should be additional resources. Similarly, it should be country driven resource allocation process be nationally owned and should not undermine national institutions. Before I conclude, let me focus on few potential areas of our competitive advantage. That includes tourism, hydropower, agribusiness, and IT, among others. This sector ensures attractive rate of returns Government of Nepal stand ready to make conducive environment and making competitive policy arrangement to promote investment in those sectors. We wish to collaborate with private sector in developing feasible financing instruments in the coming days. 
I do believe that discussion initiated during this conference will demystify innovation in development finance and explore new options. We will be considering the findings from discussion and welcome recommendations on how best Nepal can mobilize international funding to cater to the infrastructure needs of the country and to enable achievement of economic targets in a sustainable and consistent path. Finally, I wish for a success of this conference. Thank you very much. Who's also the chairperson of the Investment Board of Nepal to address this assemblage. Very good morning and namaste to everybody. Honorable Minister of Finance and uh, Vice Chairman of IBN, Dr. Prakasharan Mahat, Excellencies, Distinguished Guests, Delegates, Friends from Media, Ladies and Gentlemen. I am pleased to be here at this International Conference on Financing for Nepal, organized by Office of the Investment Board Nepal in collaboration with Standard Chartered Bank and Sejan. We came together today to showcase country's investment potential and explore avenues for strengthening cooperation with private sector, including bank and financial institutions, development financing institution, multilateral development banks and other development partners for promoting private investment, including foreign direct investment in Nepal. The government of Nepal is committed and have already initiated to improve policy, legal, regulatory, procedural, and institutional regime to strengthen business and investment environment and opportunities in Nepal by offering an enabling investment climate adequate protection and providing necessary fiscal incentives and other facilities including effective handholding of valued investor during the entire business life cycle. To facilitate investment and effectively handhold investor in project development and execution, Investment Board Nepal established in 2011 is first reference point for large-scale investment above 6 billion rupees and the Department of Industry is looking after other investment projects. In our effort to achieve development goals, we have identified several key sectors that require significant investment. This sector include physical infrastructure, energy, tourism, agriculture, and manufacturing. We need the support and partnership of the private sector and financial institution to align with our efforts in achieving nation's sustainable development goals for shared prosperity. As we are looking into bridging Nepal's investment gap through innovative, sustainable solutions, we believe this conference shall be instrumental to unlock the financing approaches towards development of strategic infrastructure projects in the country and create new opportunities for business along with the decent job creation for our people. Government is committed to work with other international partners to attract foreign investment and create new opportunities. We are eager to have an effective partnership with the private sector along with financing institutions and development partners in our development efforts. Right from the very beginning of my tenure, I am trying my best to create the conducive atmosphere for the effective partnership with the private sector. I acknowledge this initiative of the Office of the Investment Board, Standard Chartered Bank and Season in organizing this event 
by bringing all the relevant actors of government and private sector ecosystem together. I urge all the delegates present here to brainstorm on appropriate financing instrument and approaches for Nepal, which will be instrumental in meeting the financial gap. I think that this conference is very timely because we are in the last phase, final phase of preparing the policy document and budget for the next year. Lastly, I would like to thank you all for your active and valuable participation in the conference. I wish a grand success of the conference. Thank you. Thank you very much. And it's our turn to extend our heartfelt gratitude to the Right Honorable Prime Minister for his very strong, very optimistic uh,